someone asked, can you please make a video about the benefits of adding injectable L-carnitine to TRT? This is the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And if you want to learn all about the science-based information on this topic, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and you'll be on your way. Yeah, so carnitine's always been tutored as the fat loss amino acid. Uh, some studies that I've looked at said that it really doesn't increase the amount of fat loss when taken exogenously because see, carnitine is not an essential amino acid. It is synthesized by the body and it's synthesized from two essential amino acids. Essential simply means we must take them in from food. And I believe it's lysine and methionine which are required to produce L-carnitine, but you also need ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, uh, you need ferrous iron, you need uh, pyroxidine, and you need niacin. So if you do have a deficiency in any of these uh, minerals, you're probably going to have a deficiency in L-carnitine. So even though it is a non-essential amino acid, which your body can synthesize, if you do have a deficiency in L-carnitine, then exogenous L-carnitine can help with fat loss. And there was a RAC study done that showed that there was no significant increase in fat loss from L-carnitine injections but this was also found that these racks did not have a deficiency to begin with when they tested serum levels. And that's probably why there was no net change. So again, if you had a deficiency that you fixed, you may probably benefit from the fat loss. What I found interesting, and I sent you the study to link in the description, is a 2006 study showed that there is actual upregulation of the androgen receptor with L-carnitine supplementation prior to training. So if you're gonna supplement L-carnitine, and then you're going to go in and, and, and lift, and then you're going to refeed afterwards, they found that the, the, the absorption of testosterone by the androgen receptor was significantly increased in this study uh, with L-carnitine use prior to training. Uh, I don't know if this has anything to do with, you know, because L-carnitine is not really a nitric oxide type. It's not like an arginine. It's not something that helps systemic circulation per se, but it probably has some effect on the androgen receptor directly. And I did read the abstract in all fairness. I did not read the full study, but the abstract in and of itself confirmed and the conclusion confirmed that they did find measurable increases. So the way I see it is this, you're going to take a hormone, testosterone in this case, an androgen that is supposed to, you know, affect uh, positive change in your body. And then you're going to have the, you know, this is the key. Then you have the lock that the key attaches to and the lock takes some of the keys, but not, not all of them. Now I could tell you, I have a master lock that can accept all of your keys, but you have to take this amino acid and, and then you become a master lock. Why not do that? Why not make your therapy more efficient by taking a natural amino acid that your body can utilize anyway? Now in my clinic, what we do is for patients, we can prescribe something called a GAC injection, which I personally use a few days a week, uh, pre-workout, which I love. It's basically a trimino acid formula of glutamine, arginine, and L-carnitine. So the L-carnitine, as I said, pre-workout upregulates androgen receptors, improves the amount of free testosterone that can be absorbed into the cell and increase the amount of protein synthesis, especially with a refeed after your workout, which we all do anyway. Presumably if you lift, you're going to eat after. Uh, and then glutamine is going to help you with the muscle hardening. And then arginine, as we know, is a a uh, precursor to citrulline, which has a big impact on nitric oxide. This helps erectile function and helps circulation, helps to, you know, open up the endothelium for better vasodilation effect, uh, improves cardiovascular health and overall systemic circulation, probably increase some vascularity, increase pumps in the gym, uh, help you feel better when you train uh, and improve your health at the same time. So this triamino uh, gap formula that we, we uh, prescribe to patients who by request, which is essentially just an amino peptide, uh, is phenomenal. And uh, it does contain L-carnitine. So I have found personally from my own, you know, my own experience and, and experimentation with it, that it helps. And then the study that you're linking here obviously confirms, uh, albeit it's a 14 year old study, obviously our, the way our body processes protein has not changed over the last 14 years. Why would you want to inject L-carnitine instead of taking it orally? Well, we know that the parenteral uh, form of, of administration is obviously going to hit the systemic circulation better. You're bypassing the first liver pass as you would with any PO administration of, of anything really. So uh, when you're looking to time something, you're going to prefer to either take intramuscular sub -Q or intravenous. When you're looking to control the, <clears throat> the dosing, everyone's administered. Look, if I just ate a meal 
and I'm going to take this, this, this supplement. It may take a couple hours before it hits circulation. If I take a small little, you know, insulin syringe, half inch injection, <clears throat> I know that in 30 minutes I can hit the gym and it's in my system. It's just, uh, just easier, I, I guess. I mean, you know, there are a lot of supplements that we take uh, daily. Okay. I mean, I know that myself and I know it's going to sound crazy to some, but if you think about it, it's just a way of delivering things that your body needs into your system. I may take, you know, 20, 25 capsules per day of various things. And there are things that I have to take via, or, I mean, vitamin D3. Um, can I inject it? Sure. How many injections a day do I want, right? So D3, uh, sorbic acid with the exception of uh, injectable once in a while. I mean, I, I take vitamin C, right? So I take that. I take fish oil. I, I take NAC. I take so many things orally. How many gel caps do I really want getting caught up in my intestines, you know? So this is just something that, like I said, with the GAC, again, the glutamine, arginine, and L-carnitine pre-workout, Timing wise, you know, the dose that's going in, you know, the dose you're absorbing, you know, when it's going to kick in and start working. Can you take out carnitine or at least sure um, for the, for those who are already on TRT already injecting uh, things, you know, doing this pre-workout is, is really, it's not that big a deal. And I think you have much more control over what it is that you're doing. Um, there's no guarantee you're going to absorb an oral administration of anything. Really. It's going to be so, so dependent on your individual metabolism, excretion rates, etc. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Gil. Sure. Consider becoming a channel member for exclusive features, like loyalty badges, early access to new videos, funny stuff like rough cuts and bloopers, members-only photos and status updates on the community tab, and members-only live stream chat. On desktop, use the join button next to the subscribe. On mobile, use the join link in the description. Alright guys, well do this next, click on one of these thumbnails to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization. Thanks.